Hey, what's up everyone? Yet another cold weather flying video, because it is still cold. Just got back again from doing crosswind landing practice. Uh, thank you for the Luscom engineers for not, well, honestly, it's actually not that strong a landing gear. Anyway, um, normally this is where we open the cowl, plug in the heater that I came up with a few episodes ago. You can review that. Um, long story short, we were using this heater up here. This is a milk heater, used some ducting, stuck it underneath the cowling and it kept Evelyn warm. Nothing wrong with that method, it worked. Um, it's a little bit sketchy, <laughs> um, if I'm being honest. It uses 1100 watts of power, which then puts a strain on the electrical system. I don't know how many other um, you know, heaters are gonna be on this single circuit here. So if there is a more efficient solution, why not use it, right? It so happens there is a more efficient solution. So I just got this aircraft heater. This is the Twin Hornet from aircraftheaters.com. Um, let, let's compare sizes here. So that and that. This is supposed to do a better job. So that's what we're gonna find out today. I'm gonna install it. We'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll come back on a really cold day and see how it works. So in the past we would um, plug in the milk heater and put on a little pedestal and then duct in here and I'd liked having the duct underneath there thinking heat rises and you know it heats up the whole engine well these guys say we want our heater actually close to the top of the engine and their theory is that we're gonna heat the engine from the top down which seems counterintuitive after talking to the inventor of this product, it actually makes a lot of sense. So we'll talk about that. But first off, we're gonna get this plugged in, get the cowling all buttoned up so I can get out of here. So this does come with a very long extension cord and it's actually a nice 18 gauge cord. And this only draws 300 amps, I think, two or 300 amps, or not amps, watts, two to 300 watts, thank you. Um, it has its own thermostat, it has two thermostats actually, so you could just plug it into the wall and leave it, but I like to control things remotely and turn it on and off if I wanted to. So I got that plugged into the switch unit here, which you guys should be familiar with by now. Uh, this way I can turn stuff on and off from my phone, but more importantly, this is a thermostat that transmits to my phone so I can see what the temperature is inside the cowling. I also have the oil pad heater plugged into this. I usually have that off until about 20 minutes before flight. I don't think you should have that on all the time. Um, we'll talk more about that. So we got that heater plugged in here. Uh, we got the oil pad heater. I'm gonna remotely turn this on. It's running, you know the engine's hot, the thermostat's in the back sucking in cold air. And uh, the air is cold, the engine's hot, but the air is cold because I also have the cowling wide open. So we're gonna button everything up here and then we'll come back on a cold day, see how it does. So this is the C85 engine that's in my airplane. On the lower left, you can see that kidney shaped oil sump um, and on top obviously are the cylinders. So let's take a look at what happens if we just heated the oil. You notice how we produce a lot of heat on the bottom, but the top kind of stays cold. It so happens that the oil is where all the moisture from combustion goes. So if we start doing this, we start evaporating all the moisture, which then condenses on the upper parts of the engine that are not being heated. So my old heating system, instead of relying on the oil pan heater, we use that little uh, milk house heater to duct hot air underneath the engine, which then worked itself up. So you can see we start by heating the front, which then slowly migrates and gets the rest of the engine warm as well. Um, I also make a habit of leaving the cap open, the oil filler cap, so any moisture can evaporate out of the cap instead of working its way up the engine. But in theory, that does produce a temperature gradient, right? Um, the front is gonna be a little bit warmer, the bottom's gonna be a little bit warmer. Now, realistically, the engine after flying is as warm as it's gonna get. Um, it gets plugged into the heater, so I don't think we ever have a big hot cold gradient, but it's still there, right? That's where this heater comes in. So the Twin Hornet, they want you to heat from the top down. So let's see what happens. You see how I put some oil in the sump there? We start by heating the top, and then the aluminum and steel inside the engine are gonna heat the rest of the engine through conduction. So conduction isn't fast in this case, 
but it's very efficient. And as you can see, the top of the engine always stays warmer than the part that the moisture is in. So we're never going to have a situation where we're potentially evaporating the um, moisture that's in the oil and then condensing it at some cooler part of the engine. So in my testing, I found that the Twin Hornet does heat the oil a little bit as well, but they're not super worried about that because the oil actually maintains its viscosity. So I still turn on my oil sump heater about 30 minutes before I go flying. That way it's not on constantly. We don't have that big temperature gradient, but my oil is still warm, so I don't have to sit on the ramp waiting forever um, for that oil to heat up because my plane doesn't produce a lot of power, so it doesn't heat up all that much, right? So I hope this kind of explained why we're heating from the top down, which is somewhat counterintuitive. Now let's look and see in real life how well this actually works. So let's, uh, let's go back to the airplane on a cold day. All right, it is very cold today. So a good day to test out the little mini heater. It's two degrees right now with a nice wind blowing right into the hangar. So we're gonna make this quick. So if you remember, put the little heater in the front, covered it up with blankets. Now, I, I noticed I made a little oopsie here. Look at this gap. So there, that's, that's actually a pretty big gap. So we'll see how that affects things. So there's the heater wailing away. There's the new granny panties around the oil sump. So let's grab the thermal camera and see how this looks. So it's always a good sign when you have excess heat leaking out of the airplane. Um, so at least we're getting some heat in there. Um, here's why, because you can see that uh, cowling is open mostly. But despite that, we still have good heat on this side. So there's the heater right there, jetting out at 80 to 100 degrees, hitting that crank. This cylinder is 45 degrees. Uh, Continental considers anything under 40 degrees to be a cold start. So we're well over that on our cylinder. Here's the oil pan w as far away as you can get from the heater, which is in the mid 20s to 30s. Like I said, it's not designed to heat oil. There's the back accessory case in the mid 40s. And underneath we have the carburetor and um, lower part of the engine, all, all in the mid 40s. So not bad considering this side was open. Going on the other side, um, we can see it's a little bit warmer. And I set the temperature gradient on manual, so that's why it looks like this side is burning up. Um, in fact, the cylinders are this side are actually just in the 70s, so definitely warmer when you close the cowling. There's the center crank in the mid 60s, oil filter in the mid 40s. Um, there's the oil sump again in the high 30s. Now I would never do this unattended, but being that I'm not using the milk house heater, I put it in the airplane while I'm pre-flighting, and now I have cabin heat, which is awesome. Even though it all leaks up because this plane is not very well insulated. Now despite being windy and around zero degrees, the airplane started up just fine, um, no issues there. It was painfully cold flying, but that's not what we're evaluating this heater on. So, so far so good. That said, I want to do a little bit more data gathering on this, so if you got a few more meds, stick around. If not, go to aircraftheaters.com, mention Aviana, and um, you get free shipping, and you don't pay sales tax. But let's, uh, let's do a little bit more research here. So back again. It is uh, still cold. It's not super cold. It's about 15 degrees or so, which is, as you can see, I'm not super dressed up. Um, but I, I want to see how the camera, or how the heater works when half the cowling isn't open. So let's grab the thermal camera and then see how this turned out. So on this side, we see the cylinders are in the mid to low 50s. You see the heater in the middle there pumping out hot air, um, all that hot air coming out, going to the other side of the engine. But you can see through conduction, the back of the engine's nice and warm still. Underneath the engine here, this is underneath, also nice and warm. So that heat is migrating through. Looking at the other side, you can see that hot spot, so that's where the heater is blowing. Um, you can see these cylinders are quite a bit warmer, uh, so they're in the 80s, high 70s. I suspect as that hot air is flowing over them uh, through the process of conve convection, those fins are grabbing on that heat and then pushing it back into the engine. So it's warmer. Um, I'm not worried about the temperature difference. 
but there's something about the asymmetry that bothers me. So, as I was up flying, I was thinking, what if we use this little heater from the bottom up, and how would that affect the um, end product? I also decided to add my oil under the cowling so that can warm up. So when I have to add oil, it's not freezing cold oil. Luckily, there's no shortage of cold days in Iowa, so we're able to test out this new setup right away. We can see that the lower cowl is a lot warmer this time, obviously because there's a heater right behind it. Looking inside, um, the cylinders are warmer, and we can see that the central, the center section of the case is in the high 60s. The cylinders themselves are also in the high 60s, low 70s. Looking underneath, uh, as you would expect, it'd be a little bit warmer. The back of the engine is a lot warmer in this case. I suspect that's because the heater is not contained, the heat is not contained by the baffle um, in the front upper part of the engine. You can see the oil tank was in the 50s, uh, pulling the heater out here. So we're looking underneath the engine here. So there's the heater. Underneath the engine, we can see the carburetor intake tracks all in the 70s and 80s. So that's all excellent. Looking on the other side, temperatures are pretty consistent. They're ever so slightly warmer on this side. I suspect, again, that's because the heater is pointed more in this direction, but the differential is a lot smaller. Um, again, even when we just threw the heater in the top, no part of the engine was colder than the dew point. So at no point would there be condensation happening. Here the oil sump is in the 50s, so that's before turning on the electric oil heater. So the oil's warm, it's, it's certainly gonna flow, it's not, you know, zero degree oil, but it's not so hot to where we're creating a lot of condensation. So, will this allow you to fly on cold days? Yes, plain and simple. We, we really didn't need a 12 minute video to determine that, but you know how I like to get into detail sometimes. So. If you're interested in getting one, check them out, aircraftheaters.com. If you're interested in more cold weather flying content for whatever reason, I get a whole playlist for that, so make sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching.